What's going on Adalo community? This is Mario Flawless with Templar Design. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can add sound effects to your Adalo mobile app. Let's jump right in. So today's request comes from Eugene and Eugene basically just wants a simple method to play a sound when a button is pressed. Now this can be used in a lot of different use case scenarios. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you exactly how I've done it. So this is, this is an example here. So we have uh, uh, two separate sounds. We have a success sound and an error sound and you, you can configure the sounds however you'd like, but these are two just really simple ones we can use to show you how it's done. So if I click this play sound button, or error. Okay, so let me show you how it's done. All right, so in this app, I just have one screen just to show you how to build it. All right, before I show you how to create the functionality of playing a sound when a button is pressed, let me show you how I have the database set up for the sounds. So if I click on database, I haven't done anything with the users. I don't have any users at all in this, just a uh, sound effects collection. In the sound effects collection, I have a name and an audio file. For this example, I have placed two records, two sound effects into the system. So I have an error sound effect, which sounds like a buzz and a success, which is like an, an arcade bling sound. So we'll know which one is which when we set up the action. Okay, so we just have these two so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add two inputs into the home screen here. Okay, so we'll grab an input here. We'll drop it, we'll nest it like right under there and we'll make this kind of small. And we're going to call this sound effect player input. And we'll switch this to number, delete the placeholder and set it to zero for the default value. Okay, we'll come back to this one in just a moment. We're gonna add another input. We'll put it right next to this one. Shrink this one down to about the same size. This one we're gonna leave as a normal type input, but we're gonna call this sound selector input. Erase the placeholder and leave the default value blank okay the next thing we have to add is our audio player all right so we're, we're just going to drop this in right here and let's get rid of some of these things that we no longer need first thing we want to do is we want it to auto play the sound so as soon as the auto uh, as soon as the audio player is displayed we want it to play a sound okay we can leave this enabled it really makes no difference because they probably won't be traveling to another screen during this process uh, artwork, we're going to disable the artwork. Okay, just toggle it off there. For the progress bar, let's make this zero, zero. We don't even want to see the progress bar. So we can get rid of the border. We can make the marker transparent, the filled color transparent, unfilled color also transparent. Okay, we'll get rid of the play and pause buttons. We'll get rid of those buttons forward and back buttons and we'll leave those disabled so the only thing we should see are these here so what we'll do is we will move this right here right next to our other two inputs and we're gonna make this that big okay so we shrunk it down now these currently have a height of 40 pixels so we can we can make them smaller we can make these transparent also just so that they're not even seen just by removing the border background and setting the text colors to transparent. So we could do that here also. Okay. All right. So now we have the audio player. We don't have a song input placed in here just yet. So what we're going to do is we're gonna make a list of the sound effects. All right, so we're gonna make a list from this audio player. So make sure you have the audio player selected. Click make list and we're gonna select sound effects. 
We want all sound effects to be available, but we want to filter it based on the action that gets clicked. So what we'll do is we'll add a custom filter where name is equal to other components, sound selector input. Okay, so that's the second one. Remember, the first one is the sound effect player, and this, the second one is the sound selector. Okay, we're gonna set this to a maximum number of items to one. And we'll make this smaller also. Now to hide all of that, you can also just add a rectangle and put them over them. So here's what we're gonna do to make the sound effect appear. So right now this is zero. What I want to do is let's 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 first add the button, okay? Okay, so we got a button. So when we click this button, we want to switch the uh, this sound effect player to one, and we want to put the specific sound in here. All right. So we have this. We know that it's going to be the sound selector input. So first, before we do that, click on your list, and let's change the visibility settings to sometimes visible if other components sound effect player input is equal to one okay so that means it's only going to be visible when that first input is one so let's scroll down click on your audio player component and now that we have this nested within the list of sound effects we're going to set the url the url of the song to current sound effects audio file url okay we'll leave the rest blank just as is we do have to set an action here when the song ends to hide the audio player when, it, when the sound effect is done playing. So we'll add an action here to change the input value of the sound effect player back to zero when the song is done, when the sound effect is done. Okay, now we can set this up here. Like this one will be the play sound button. So when somebody clicks this button, we can change the input value of the sound selector first. We want to tell them, we want to tell the audio player first which sound to load. And we'll do this by just adding the text here. This is a, a, this is a success action button. So if you, we want to play the success action with this button, we're just going to add success here and then we'll click it and that will change the second input to success. And then once the song is selected, or sorry, the sound effect, we're going to set the input of the sound effect player to one. And that will play the success sound. So it's going to load the success sound, then load the player, play the sound, and then hide the sound. Let's make sure it works. It works. Okay, and now remember, we can hide those. You see the, the audio player thing kind of pop up there. You can put a rectangle just like this. Okay. Let's try that. I'll refresh. Now, of course, you can you can fiddle with the display settings, but that's how you would play a sound. Yeah, even if you could even do it like this, like we could we could just drag all of these below. Okay, so now that won't interfere with any of it. We could group those together even so they stay together. Okay, so refresh. Just like that. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at www.templar.design.